Welcome back to our Blue Sea Water channel. I want to do yet another video on medical ozone therapy. Uh, we recently came up with a new technique. I was very lucky and fortunate to discover this technique because the healing benefits were quite extraordinary. And it's, it's worth reviewing uh, my process because this affects everyone. I first want to just start by saying with every therapy you do, it's important to study the therapy, understand strategically what it does, what it doesn't do, and, and really break it down. Uh, ozone is a very tactical therapy. It has some clear purposes, but it, it requires uh, the skill of understanding each application within the therapy and what it does. So for example, if you buy a home system, the main therapy to get to the blood is called rectal ozone insufflation. It's the alt therapy for IV, where you go to a clinic. IV ozone is very expensive, and most people cannot afford regular treatments. They're upwards of 1,000 plus in some cases, minimally maybe two or 300 for a low level treatment. With rectal insufflation, and this goes back and forth in the ozone world, you can achieve similar uh, results as with IV. But the one thing that also I want to put out there, I knew a doctor at fourth stage cancer and he could no longer do IV ozone and he recovered from fourth stage cancer using purely uh, home ozone and, and he did a ton of rectal. So you can control how much you do the downside of ozone is what's called oxidative stress. It can have what's called a detox reaction. You could feel very inflamed. So we always recommend doing something called Brown's gas therapy, which is a form of hydrogen therapy to balance out ozone therapy. So if you're very, very sick, you really almost must have the hydrogen therapy because you're going to want to do very high dose ozone. Think of it like you're going out in your backyard to burn a bunch of leaves and you bring a torch, but you forget the garden hose and you burn down your house. So if you have that garden hose, you can control the burn. Even if you overdo it, you can pull it back. It's the same thing with hydrogen. Let's say you really overdo the ozone. You can immediately offset that effect with the hydrogen. Also, you could do some other antioxidants. There's a whole slew of them if you really, really overdo it. But between hydrogen and those antioxidants, you can, if you overdo it, if you think I've done too much, easily rectify that. So once again, the key is strategy. If you're very, the more sick you are, the more higher quantity of the gas you're going to want to do and the more often you're going to want to do it. However, like with anything else, you just can't jump in and just go full tilt. The body has to process, process the detoxification you know, again, there's just so much you can do per session, per week, per day. So you got to create pathways for the body to eliminate toxins. This is part of our whole antimicrobial program. So ozone is probably the most powerful wipeout therapy in terms of pathogens, but you really have to have a way for those toxins to process out of the body. So we need to develop the kidneys, we need to develop the liver, the, the colon, and we have a lot of co-therapies that go with ozone. It's in our antimicrobial program. One key therapy is, is called generically the mission coil or electrostatic charge therapy. This allows one to treat the kidneys, treat the liver, and also treat, you can build up to long periods of time. Ozone is a very short duration. It's like a nuclear bomb kind of, you hit the body, boom, does a lot of action, a lot of catalytic results. Uh, but you, you're not doing it for long periods of time. When you're very, very sick, you need to do so much supportive work. So you need to support your organs. You need to treat your organs. You need to process and sweep out the toxins. So you need to have an effective colon sweeping protocol. We have supplements that do that. We also recommend very, very high level probiotics to put a 24 seven vigilant probiotic community in your colon. Most people who are really sick have lost that vigilant gut immunity. Gut immunity is about 70% to 80% of your immune system. If that fails, you're going to have tons of inflammatory autoimmune type diseases. 
So it's very important to pay attention to these various steps that go with doing ozone. It's really important to study and understand the process. So when you go in, it's like going into a very strategic battle. You know, no general goes into a battle without a plan and, and organizing all the different elements that go into a battle plan. Same thing when you're sick, you need a battle plan. We try to explain every step, but in simplicity, you must get rid of the toxins. The colon, therefore, must be functional. Your kidneys must be functional. Your liver must be functional. And your lymphatic system must be functional. So if you understand all this, we have all the processes. I've been at this so many years. So we have a very integrative program to help get everything working together. Okay, so back to ozone. The rectal ozone is the main delivery system for the blood. It also is profound on the large intestine and colon. You can go to very high dosage levels. This one doctor out of Mexico who had four stage cancer was going to an extreme levels. And he wasn't at the time even doing the hydrogen to offset it. And he didn't even have these Russian uh, coils. So the more synergy you bring, the less extreme you have to be in just relying on one therapy. So it's always best to coordinate. You know, a team of if you're like a basketball player, you want to, like, the, I'm a Celtic fan. The, the the team effort. You know, you might have a couple of superstars, but you need a great team. So it's the same thing with healing. You can't just rely. The more you rely on one therapy, even though people are telling you this one therapy is going to do miracles for you, not smart. Develop a team consciousness. Understand how you coordinate different therapies together. So... <clears throat> The more you learn that skill set, the better off and the better results going to be. We can help you strategize, set up the plan. Now, let's go back to ozone. So you have to identify, eat within that therapy, you have rectal insufflation for the blood and for the large intestine. It will not treat the small intestine or the stomach. That's a different therapy. If you want to treat your brain, your ears, your sinuses, there's sinus insufflation for the sinuses, ear insufflation for the outer ear, and it'll help with microcirculation in the brain and the upper lymph. Here's an interesting example about strategy, skill. I had some post-COVID weird, bizarre smell going in my system, and it was not going away, plus I also had a middle ear issue, and then I ended up fluid in my middle ear, and I was my hearing was compromised, I had headaches, and in all my understanding of ozone and what's out there, I thought, well, if I do the sinus insufflation, what's wrong? Why is this not going away? I'm blasting my sinuses. So, and I was doing ear insufflation. And then I would read online that to get to the middle ear, you could do ear insufflation. Well, guess what? You have what's called an ear drum. It's like a wall. The gas isn't going through your eardrum unless you have a hole in your eardrum. So I was wondering, well, why are they saying you can treat the middle ear? Well, I don't know. I don't know the answer. But I kept querying, and I got very fortunate to figure out a new technique, which is uh, on our YouTube channel, for going up the eustachian tube to the middle ear. Once you figure it out, it's really quite simple. But this is an example. I was suffering for a year and a half with this post-COVID. Apparently, some low-grade viral thing was just kind of redoing itself, not at a super high level, up in the middle ear station tube zone. The ozone was not getting there. Once I figured out how to get up there, boom, within two or three treatments, it was completely gone. The headaches were better. The smell was gone. My middle ear, I could hear clearly. Everything was literally gotten. And this is the beauty of ozone. If you can get to wherever you need to go, it's an extraordinary therapy. It's like a wipeout therapy. Problem was, that was a little sneaky sidebar place to get to, which I was lucky enough to figure out how to do it. So if you can get there, it's amazing. Now you have to strategize ozone. So you have the sinus insufflation with the sinuses. Now you have the middle ear station tube treatment. Great. You can get to the middle ear. You get the ear insufflation for the ears and microcirculation in the brain. You can't breathe ozone. Can't breathe it, can't breathe this, they can't treat the lungs with ozone. So we have other protocols for treating the lungs that will go deep into the lungs. You can do rectal for the entire blood, 
go, you know, systemic blood. But keep in mind, even if you saturate the blood, do a lot of ozone, there's nothing like a sinus insufflation to get like a local sinus infection. You can do all the rectal you want. You can do all the IVs you want. You want to have good strategy. So figure out where you need to go and find the proper delivery system. You can do injections. You could do bagging. Now, women can do vaginal insufflation for the lymphatic system. Men can't. So if you're trying to treat the lymph, that's a different thing for a guy. And there's ways to do it. Now, let's say you're a guy and you have a prostate issue. Ozone is not going to do the job. Why? Because the gas is, even if you do rectal, I mean, you could potentially do a penile kind of insufflation, but that's kind of painful and difficult. So then you need a different therapy. If you're trying to treat, let's say, the kidneys, it's not going to spend a lot of time, the gas on the kidneys. It'll help, but you just don't have the time in to just hit the kidneys, hit the kidneys. That's where our electrostatic charge therapy comes in. The electrostatic charge therapy is a cousin to ozone. Why do I say that? Because electrostatic charge is a lightning therapy, basically, to make it simple. It's the alchemy of lightning, high voltage electrical field, 300 hertz, spinning in a vortex, entering deep into the cells, straight on the body. Ozone takes lightning, puts it on the oxygen. Now you have lightning oxygen, and you infuse that. So very similar, but the when you can go in the body with this volatile gas, you get more permeability. But the time in, you know, it, it goes in, it does a credible job, but then it's done. So now you take these coils, and you can have hours and hours and hours, if need be, spending putting the coils strategically around the body. The coil system is very similar to ozone. There's a whole body dynamic way to go about it. You could treat like a whole region, maybe three or four feet with certain coils. And then if you're trying to, if you're trying to get um, to a very targeted area, there's a different protocol. So you have to once again strategize how you're working with the coils. But they work together, their synergy, and you really need to strip down your thinking to very simple levels. Number one, can I get to the cells? Number two, where am I trying to get to? Number three, how long do I have to do it? How much do I have to do it? How often do I have to do it? Number four, if I do this and it creates a lot of detox reactions, what do I do? How do I process the reaction from this treatment? Again, if you're burning leaves in your house, and you don't have that garden hose, you could do some serious harm to your home start a big fire. So, and by the way, I always give that example in New Mexico, they had a control burn and burned down the whole city of Los Alamos with a control burn. So it's very important to understand strate strategically how to have a controlled burn with when you're using ozone. Okay, so it's very, one of my jobs is to help you sort everything out. This seems very probably alien to a lot of you because you're not thinking this way. I've been working with a holistic medicine. I understand a lot of different philosophies and, you know, approaches from kind of naturopathy approaches to, you know, everybody talks about, you know, disease begins with a toxic colon to Chinese medicine. And, you know, that's foreign to most of us. What, is, what does it mean, the meridians? But to me, it's very... You know, just obvious what that means, but we don't think about an energy circuitry in the body. We're not intimate with that. But I understand where these therapies work at that level. There's a consciousness level. Now, here's an interesting example. I want to, a lot of people are doing consciousness work. I know people who are doing these heavy posts on Facebook talking about consciousness work. And I happen to also know some of these people have Crohn's disease. If you have a very toxic colon, in Chinese medicine, that is grief. If your colon is toxic, you're going to feel depressed. You're going to have grief. All the consciousness work on the world, reading all the gurus, is not going to help you rid yourself of a very simple, fundamental problem. You need to get that colon right. Now, we can argue that that's genetically created through generations of sorrow and grief, but still... In the here and now, be here now, there's ways to bring tremendous energetic resolution to not only the colon, the lungs, the kidneys, the liver. The Chinese medicine is a beautiful system because it, it's pragmatic. 
It says that this organ system goes with this emotion. Get it right. What do they say? We'll get the energy vital. Very simple. Now, the only question is how. Now, this is where I sometimes have issue with some of the older traditions because they're very traditional and they always recommend the same thing that they've been doing for thousands of years. They're kind of snobbish in a way, but that's okay. They're very powerful. They have a right to be sort of arrogant because, you know, they've been, they're very in-depth, you know, spiritually, energetically. They have a lot of wisdom, but there's newer things coming along. So I would always encourage any Chinese doctor to look at the new technologies and say, oh, how does this fit into a Chinese medicine paradigm or an Ayurvedic doctor? Naturopathic doctors, they lean into herbs. You know, there's, there's so much new stuff, and that's partly what I try to do is scour the planet for what's out there. And I actually am thinking multidimensionally, okay, oh, this fits the Chinese model this way, the Ayurvedic model this way, the naturopathic model. You know, you could, you could speak naturopathy, you could speak Chinese, you could speak Indian. You know, they're, they're all got a language system of healing. So in simple terms, it doesn't matter what language you're speaking. Let's say you're listening to great music, it's music. You don't need to have an interpreter. So... We're going to try to make it as simple as possible for you when we're doing a therapy. I will, at times, try to explain to you, oh, well, you know, the meridians are very important. You know, it's like a wiring in your house. If you have a break in the wiring and one room is out, that's significant. So you can think of energy flow in the body as continuity of energy flow. But again, I just want to emphasize there are some very simple principles, like if you have a toxic gut, a toxic body, if you have a pathogen that's kind of like Lyme disease, it just keeps coming back and back, you have to have a strategy. One thing about these pathogens, they don't give up. And they're very inventive. They figure ways to survive. That's why I had a year and a half in the middle ear. I didn't know, I wasn't treating the middle ear station tube. And that's, I'd never thought, oh, it snuck up there. Sneaky little buggers. But something was reinventing itself up in that region. So one thing also, not only is this, you know, ozone, just to back to ozone again, not only is it good for killing pathogens, it, it's a, it, there's a lot, you can Google healing benefits of medical ozone therapy. It stimulates tissue healing. It stimulates all kinds of chemical reactions. There's a whole slew of healing catalytic actions that ozone does. It's an amazing catalyst. Everybody knows oxygen is good. And by the way, if you have compromised brain chemistry, definitely deal with the gut, gut brain, deal with your, uh, look at your hormones. There's, you know, whenever I work with somebody, we kind of break down a list of possibilities. Thyroid, low thyroid could do crazy things to your brain. Toxins, of course, gut brain, um, heavy metals like aluminum will affect the brain. There's so much you can do. What I love about ozone is it goes in very, very deeply, and it's very healing. It has the ability to dive into every cell, if you, if you, you know, depending where you're going. But if you're going up the sinuses, it's amazing. It can wipe out 20 years of sinus infections. Now, hydrogen therapy is similar. You know, you have hydrogen, and oxygen, some of the most fundamental gases on the planet. Hydrogen is the mother of all elements. It's a tiny, tiny molecule. If you're sick, that will go everywhere. It'll get to the most compromised regions of your body, permeate in and help healing, but it's not antimicrobial. It will not kill pathogens. So you use hydrogen to help repair the cells, to help uh, offset inflammation. If you have, let's say, COVID and you're getting a cytokine storm, you want to breathe that hydrogen to beat back that inflammatory response. But again, permeability, ability to get deep into the cell. If you're getting older, you should always be thinking, wow, how do I get to these cells? How do I get the cells in my liver? How do I get the cells in my lungs? How do I get the cells in my brain? How do I repair the cells? But first, you got to get in there. So if you're taking a bunch of supplements and getting nowhere, there's a reason. They're not absorbing. So when you do some of these very deep dive microcellular therapies, now you help that cell work better, communicate better, and start to absorb those nutritional supplements. Another example of a cellular therapy that I use as PEMF therapy. So I encourage everybody to really, you have to sit down and I can help you do this, break it down and think differently. So number one, just a review, global toxicity, but think about what it means if your gut 
immunity isn't right. It's like a septic tank that's failed. So you either dig a new one or you can't actually recede the septic tank. You only got one septic tank. You can't put a new colon in your body. So you better figure out how to revamp the one you got. And if it's dead in the water, you're going to have a backlog of shit, basically, sorry, which means autoimmune disease. Because when that, when that shit backlogs and you're smelling it, well, think of the body as it's trying to beat off these pathogens at the gut level, the gut immunity, not let them get a foothold. They've gotten a foothold now. They're wreaking havoc. The immune system is overworking, and you're getting what's called autoimmune anti-inflammatory illness, meaning the immune system's going haywire, the body's inflaming, and certain, depending on how the immune system fails, it might attack the nerves or it might attack the muscles, fibromyalgia, for instance, or arthritis, the, the nerves, the bones, the f f fascia, you name it. So you got to look at the root. The root is you have failed fundamentally in your immune function. And again, Google, gut immunity. Now, correcting it, I've spent 40 years studying this. I have pragmatic strategies. My assessment of gut immunity essentially is if you're born with a weak one, you're never going to get a good one. You got to compensate. There are ways to compensate and build a strong gut immunity. But there are a lot of programs that I used to buy into where you clean the body and then do fermented foods and blah, 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 blah. But as soon as something goes south, fails again. So I, my program after all these years, I think is practical. It works. And a clue is it uses a wide range of high level, super high level soil bacteria products, which are the sort of the Navy seals of probiotics that were designed for bio warfare. Literally two of them come from Russia. One comes to the U S I have literally about five different probiotics I use, super high level. That's what it takes. We live in such a compromised world. We have, you know, COVID was supposedly came, leaked out of a lab. You need military level probiotics in your body. That's my opinion. I've been doing that for a long time. And on top of that, that doesn't do the job completely. That's where ozone comes in once in a while, or depending on how sick you are, you're gonna have to reinforce with these other therapies. People with a good gut, the lucky ones, the lucky few, they never get sick, they always poop, they eat garbage. They just have really amazing vigilant gut, gut flora. No matter what they do, they even do antibiotics. Boom, it bounces back. Most people, they're born with compromised gut flora. They never had it. They don't know what it's like. You could just, as far as I'm concerned, uh, yes, if you want to do juicing your entire life, do immaculate eating, you can probably do okay. You're never going to have that, what's called that real strong digestive fire. That's the other side of what people don't understand. A vital gut is like a furnace. It, it puts out a lot of energy. It's, it's, a, it's a very critical part of what's called uh, your vital life force. And, and these, these probiotics... When, they, when they're working properly, they produce a lot of heat. You get what's called digestive fire, but it translates into also having a higher metabolism, processing better. Now, I came with poor probiotics, and I also came with a poor thyroid metabolism, par partially because I grew up in New York and we were drinking all this fluorinated, chlorinated water, which does kill the thyroid. The friend of the thyroid is iodine. The enemy of the thyroid is fluorine, chlorine, and bromine. Read David Brownstein's books on this issue. They're called toxic halides. Iodine's the good halide. Anyhow, the bottom line is when we grew up, we drank tap water and it had fluorine and chlorine, and we were eating tons of white bread, which had bromine. Now, there's also genetic influences. If the thyroid's not signaling the colon to work, then you have what's like it's like a thermostat not signaling your furnace to go on. So anybody you know that's overweight, they're cold all the time, and they're kind of confused, those are symptoms of low thyroid. So just doing high-level probiotics is not enough. I have everybody always get lab work for the thyroid because you got to have a good thermostat here to signal this. Okay, it's it seems like a lot, but the one thing is if everything goes south and you're trying to get back, ozone is a huge, huge therapy doing a lot of work to help wipe out the pathogens that have taken advantage of your toxic colon 
One classic example is Candida. Candida builds what's called a biofilm state. It protects itself from biofilm. Ozone will knock out the biofilm. So I consider ozone one of the most pivotal therapies, especially when people start getting chronically ill. The more ill you are, the older you are, the more skill, the more co-therapies you need. Just the fact of life. If you're 25 years old, you might be able to get away with two or three things and get the job done. You might just do the high-level probiotics, not even need ozone. If you're 55 years old, now you might need the ozone. Everyone should have hydrogen because it helps things work better. But, you know, so it, everybody just has to see what's going to work based on their how chronically ill they are. In, in nature cure medicine, they have a term called the four stages of illness. First is acute, subacute, it starts burying them. Then it goes chronic, burying deeper, degenerative, you're falling apart. The important point of this therapy is you want to resolve things right away in the acute stage. But if you start burying, you got to pull things back up and out. You've buried something, and now you get more chronic illness. Very, very challenging, very interesting theory of illness. And once again, I mean, an example would be you get a toxic colon. Uh, say you start being opportunistic for candida. It grows in your body. It starts to morph. There's theories that say this can morph into cancer. But meanwhile, your body's all clogged up. It's not processing. Your lymph's all jammed up. We just break it down. We look at every system. We go to work. We get the colon working right. The key, ozone, the electrostatic charge, and the probiotics are really three killer pieces. At the same time, we want to sweep that colon. We want to sweep away the toxins as we clean it. Use some... Good, good fibers. We have some great products for the colon to help kill parasites. You just do simple strategy. The more you do it, the more you understand this. Uh, the more we review this with you, you'll start thinking more holistically. All righty. So uh, I just want to review once again. With ozone, it's very important to understand each application, what it's doing, and have a strategy when you're doing it. Um, please check out our ozone playlist. And if you have any questions, contact me, Andrew at bluesywater.com. Thank you.